Hello. We are in uh, module 39 of the symbolic logic course, and uh, we are going to start talking about what is known as the multiple quantifier situation. So far, when I have shown you what quantifiers are, how to use them in a sentence, uh, I have shown you with one quantifier. But there can be situations where you need to use more than one quantifier that is called multiple quantifiers proposition. And when you are using more than one quantifier, what is it that you need to be uh, careful about? How to use this license to understand uh, the multiple quantified propositions of first order predicate logic? This is what we are going to talk about today. So, with that, I shall begin the module 39. See, multiple quantifier in a statement. Now, you might think that uh, why would I even think about using more than one quantifier? Because uh, it seems like a given sentence, we are talking about a certain group and we are talking about the quantity. My answer to that is, you know, you need to look at propositions slightly carefully from now on. Uh, there will be sometimes references to more than one subject terms. See, we are doing predication, right? I mean, we are attributing properties to individuals, to some non-specified groups and so on. It is not necessary that we shall always talk about only one group or one individual. So, predication can happen simultaneously in a proposition using the reference to separate groups. Whenever that happens, when you have more than one subject term reference, you need more than one quantifier. I will explain this and I will exemplify this with uh, obviously, with actual propositions, but this is the first lesson of today that if you are asking yourself, when do I need to use more than one quantifier or how do I know that I am I'm going to need a more, than one, more than one quantifier? The answer is that it depends on the propositions that you have. If the references are to more than one subject terms, then you know that the proposition or the statement calls for the use of more than one quantifier. We will show you as I said with examples. But when you are using multiple quantifier, more than one quantifier that is, the first thing to remember is that you need to avoid scope conflict. Remember every quantifier has scope, all right, and that is specified. What you need to avoid at all cost when you are using more than one quantifier is the conflict of scope between or among these quantifiers, because otherwise you are going to have a terrible problem interpreting the variable that you are using. The sentence will not make any sense or the sentence might make more than one sense. Neither is desirable in this logic. So, to avoid scope conflict is our primary concern when you have a multiple quantifiers in a statement or more than one quantifier actually occurring in a sentence. I will show you. How do you do that? How do you avoid scope conflict? Well, uh, one of the time tested method is that, that you choose a different variable for each quantifier. Each time you are using a quantifier, pick a fresh variable. Okay? So, this is one way to do that. So, that because it is a new variable and it is a different variable, there is no question about that variable to come under the scope of any other quantifier. So, this is one way to do that. The other one is that you demarcate the scope so clearly that even if you are using the same variable, it is completely clear where one quantifier scope begins and ends and where the scope of the other quantifier starts and ends. Okay? We will show this each of these things separately. So, what did I say? I said that first of all, 
you can use more than one quantifier in a proposition if the situation demands that that is not a problem. But when you are doing that and that situation is called multiple quantifier situation, what you need to do is to ensure that there is no scope conflict. In order to avoid scope conflict, my suggestion is choose a fresh variable each time you are using a new quantifier. All right? So, because quantifier is going to require the use of a variable, just choose a fresh variable to go with your quantifier. This is one or you use the grouping procedures that you have namely the brackets, the parentheses, the curly brackets whichever one you are going to use, but use them so that the scope of one quantifier is completely clear. Okay? So, let us take a look at this kind of situation with some examples. Suppose we have See, we are beginners, so I am mentioning that U D is unrestricted, but I told you that if nothing is mentioned, then we are going to assume that the U D is unrestricted. All right. So, if I do not mention anything, the default is that the U D is unrestricted, but since we are just learning it all for the first time, so that I thought about making it absolutely explicit in that you have this kind of predications possibilities. So, R x stands for x is a rule, B x x is broken, H x x is human and P x x will be punished. And we are going to use this kind of translation key to capture this English sentence, which says if any rule is broken, someone will be punished. If any rule is broken, someone will be punished. As you see that there is this property being broken, there is this property being punished. But note that what we also have is two kinds of subjects, two kinds of things you are talking about, not just two kinds of predicates, but two kinds of things which have those properties. What are they? The two kinds of subjects are rules, this is one cluster and persons or humans. All right. So, this is rule and you are predicating something to it namely being broken and there is the humans to which you are predicating the property of being punished right? and it does not mix we do not call about rules being punished and humans being broken. right? So, that is not done. So, that is clear that we have references to different sets or groups of things. And as I told you when the reference is more to more than one groups for subject that is when you need more than one quantifier. So, let us take a look at that. So, we need we are going to need it seems like two quantifiers in this sense. But what kind of quantifiers? What are the quantity terms here? Well, as you can see, there are two quantity terms. One is any, the other one is someone. So, we need to, and none of these are clearly, I mean, it is not clear that we want to use this quantifier or that quantifier, but let us see. What does any rule mean here, if any rule is broken? The best way to um, understand that is to ask yourself, how many rules need to be broken before someone is punished? How many rule? Right? That is what quantify does. All rules will have to be broken or if even one rule is broken, someone will be punished. If you have answered in your mind, even if at least one rule is broken, you are right. Here this any means if at least one rule is broken, then how many, how many people will be punished? Someone will be punished means what? At least one human will be punished. Okay? Now, this paraphrase as I say always say, as I always say, this paraphrase is the most important step 
before you go into capturing this English sentence in your in the syntax of your first order predicate logic. So, the paraphrase of this what we have just discussed we can put it like this that if there exists at least one rule and it is broken then there ex exist at least one human who will be punished. Now, when we say this, this is still not in the first order language, right. So, what we will have to say is that if there exists at least one x such that x is rule and this property also you have to plug in and x is broken, then there exists at least one y such that y is human and y will be punished. So, there are several steps that in which you can you can divide it up. One is first of all noticing the references and deciding in your mind how many quantifiers you are going to need. Once you have decided that then next thing is what kind of quantity terms or quantifiers do we need here universal or particular universal or existential. Okay. So, that depends on the kind how good you are in the paraphrase and the paraphrase shows you the entire logical structure which you follow and you sort of translate. So, here we are we are going to do this then there is this okay. if any rule is broken comma then someone will be punished and the translation it is going to look like this. So, two quantifiers multiple quantifier situation take a look the first one says if there is this is if then. So, his whole thing is antecedent if there is at least one x such that x is a rule and x is broken then there exists at least y one y such that y is human and y will be punished got it. Now, watch what we said you have two quantifiers you also know the scope the first one scope starts from here and notice it ends here it starts from here it ends here because it is a horseshoe and there is no other indication that the entire quantifier rules over the whole thing no need if any rule is broken someone will be punished period. So, this quantifier which ru rules over the rule does not have to rule over the whole sentence correct. So, it simply starts here and ends here then comes the horseshoe sign if then and then comes the new quantifier whose scope starts from here ends here no scope conflict, but we chose a different variable also though in this case there is no question about scope conflict and I will show you how else you can do that, but still we chose a different variable right to keep it, keep the scope completely completely specified and distinct from each other. You could have done this also in this case because the scope is completely different as you can see starting from here here starting from here ends here. So, here if you had used even the same variable you have the brackets in place parentheses in place to indicate that the scopes are not going to ever come in conflict get it. So, is this allowed yes this is allowed you can use the same variable provided you are indicating the scope of two quantifiers completely distinctly if you have doubt regarding that I suggest you use a fresh variable. Okay. So, that is what the translation is. So, did you understand that this is the kind of situation where you are going to need more than one quantifier this is what we are co calling the multiple quantifier situation and handling them is as you have done in the case of single quantifier, but the point is to keep the scope separate to know which group is being governed by which quantifier and so on and so forth and your paraphrase must be done your paraphrase is going to actually show you the way to the proper translation. 
Now, this example that you saw just now, uh, we had two quantifiers, but the scopes were quite different. Okay? So, no none of the quantifier interfered with the scope of the or came in came within the scope of the other quantifier. That may not always be the case. So, sometimes you may have situation where the scope of a quantifier may be within the scope of another quantifier. So, scope of one quantifier embedded within the scope of another quantifier that also is a possibility that we need to sort of look into. And that is the situation where I have to again emphasize that the scope conflict must be avoided, must be avoided because here it is not automatically separate. You need to take some steps, proactive steps to keep the scope separate. Let me show you what we mean when a quantifier scope comes within the scope of another quantifier. Earlier we have seen that uh, sometimes quantifiers share a predicate right? and there you have seen how the meaning changes with the sequencing of the quantifiers and so on. But here is another kind of an example. Take a look. If anything is a rule, then if there are humans, it will be broken. The sentence says, if anything is a rule, okay, same pretty properties, so being a rule, then if there are humans, it will be broken. It will be broken. What will be broken? Obviously, not the humans. What will be broken? The rule. So, that is an indication that whatever variable you are choosing for the rule and whichever quantifier you are using to govern over these rules will go up to here to cover this it, which will be broken. Okay, so, once more, there is a reference here because you are using a pronoun and the noun that you are referring to use by using this it is a rule. So, it is obvious, it should be obvious that whatever quantifier you are using and with the quantifier with whatever variable you are using to refer to the rules will cover within its scope from here up to here. Why up to here? Because otherwise this reference will remain free. You want to cover even this reference. This it is nothing but the rule which will be broken. Get me? So, unlike the previous statement which was a truth functional compound, it was a horseshoe statement this one is going to be a fully quantified statement that is one thing. But we also need to notice that we have two kinds of subject term references. We are referring to rules and we are also referring to humans and then there are these properties also that you know if there are humans. So, being a human is going to be attributed predicated to one group and being a rule and being broken will be attributed to a different kind of a group. So, predications simultaneously will happen. But Now, what are the quantity terms? Obviously, we are going to need because we have two separate groups of subject terms, we are going to need two separate quantifiers fine, but what are the quantifier terms How and what kind of quanti quantifiers are we going to need? Now, here we see there is anything, if anything is a rule, right. So, again you need to ask how many things have to be a rule, if anything is a rule. And here is a rather strange kind of quantity reference, if there are humans. If there are humans, how many humans there have to be for the rule to be broken? And the answer is, even if there is at least one human, the rule will be broken. If anything is a rule, what do you say? Everything, take any x, if it is a rule or take whichever x, if it is a rule, 
or we want to say there exists at least one x such that if it is a rule it will be broken. The answer is that we have a universal reference here. Okay. If there is even one, it is not a question about there is at least one x such that it is a rule. It is about take anything. If that happens to be a rule, if there are humans, it will be broken. Okay. That is the meaning of the sentence. So, the paraphrase, the paraphrase is something like this. For any x, I am choosing x, if x is a rule, then there are, if there are humans, if there exists at least one y such that y is human, then x will be broken. Okay? So, same x will be broken. In between you have, if there exists at least one y such that y is a human. Notice that here is an if, there is a then, within the then there is a if then. right? So, we need to capture all of this, but we will start here for any x. Let us do that. So, for any x, if x is a rule, then this is the main then, right? but it is within the quantifier scope. So, the scope of this quantifier, the one that is ruling over the rules will start from here, it will go up to here. So, take any x or every x, if x is ruled then, if there exists at least one y such that y is human, then x will be broken. What are we looking at? We are looking at a multiple quantifier situation. But this multiplier, one multiple quantifier situation is such that one quantifier is within the scope of another quantifier embedded. Can you see that? The scope of this for all x starts here and goes up to here. In between you have an existential y and its scope starts from here, it ends with this y. Remember that the variable that occurs with the quantifier is covered by default and the variable adjacent to it is covered unless you have some other kind of brackets going on. Now, here the only two uh, y occurrences are these. So, there is no question about extending the scope of it until then. So, it just starts here, it ends here, right here. That is the scope of this quantifier. The rest of it is within the scope of this for all x. As you can see, the closing bracket sort of ensures that. Hmm? This bracket it starts here, this bracket is starts here. This is why we said again and again that you need to use a fresh variable to keep the scope completely clear, okay? Speci especially when you have this embedded kind of multiple quantifier situations. Is it all right? Have you understood that? So, this is one kind of a situation. The previous one was another kind of a situation, but I have tried to explain that you can handle it. You can handle it, provided the paraphrase is correct and that you take care of indicating the scope also very, very clearly. Let us try just one more. I am not mentioning the universal discourse, which means that it is unrestricted, right? So, we are talking about this. And sometimes, by looking at the translation key also, you can make out how many quantifiers you are going to need. This says p x x is a person, b x y x y is y, t x x is a thing, e x y x n is y. How many kinds of things we are talking about? Well, here is the person kind of thing and the thing kind of things. So, at least two kind of things we are talking about. Therefore, we are going to require two quantifiers in this sentence. Let us first take a look into the sentence itself. Anyone who buys everything is envied by someone, obviously, what we can call it the consumer jealousy. right? Somebody who has so much that he buys or she buys everything will be envied by someone. So, once more, anyone who buys everything is envied by someone. So, the first of all, let us take a look into anyone. 
references to the thing or to the persons? To persons. So, this is going to be, if you are looking at this group, then we are talking about persons, but we have used the term any one. So, we are going to require a quantifier there. Who buys everything? All right. So, everything. Now, there you are. That is another kind of a implicit quantity reference, everything. Envied by someone, that is another kind of a quantity reference. So, we have two groups, people and things. Within this people, we have somebody who buys or people who buy everything and people who envy those people. So, within that therefore, within the people we are going to require two quantifiers, because envying somebody right. So, that is going to happen and notice that these are all two place predicates. So, let us open it up. First is as I said two kinds of things, but within the humans we have people who buy everything and people who envy those who buy everything. So, there we are going to need another quantifier and the quantity terms are all indicated. Now, paraphrase the three quantity terms are also identified anyone, everything, someone fine. Now, quantifiers the point is that the scope of these quantifiers need to be kept separate. We are not going to do anything that sort of messes it up to see the quantity the scope. So, here is the paraphrase once more. Anyone means what? Anybody as in everybody. Everybody who buys how many things? Everything. Everything has to be universal everything. Envied by someone means at least one person envies them. If you have gotten the hang of it, if you have grasped it, the paraphrase is going to look like this. For all x, if x is a person, then for all y, if y is a thing that x buys y, then there is at least one z such that z is a person and z envies x. See whether I am correct or not. So, for all persons, all persons buys all things, then there is at least one person who envies the buyer. This is how we are going to do that. And the translation, if you recall now, now we are just going to plug it in for all x, if x is a person, right, the property predication has to happen. And for all y, if y is a thing, then x buys y, then this whole thing, then there is at least one z such that z is a person and z envies x. Did you see that how that happened? So, this is the kind of multiple quantifier situation which is more advanced kind of predications where we need more than one quantifier and I have shown you in this module how to use them by keeping the scopes distinct from each other. Okay. More to follow and we are about to end this lessons on first order predicate logic soon, but see you again in the next module. Thank you very much.